Hello everybody, welcome back to American Textbook Reading. My name is Brian Stewart, and in this lesson we're looking at Science Book 4, Lesson 12, Forces. In this unit, or in this lesson, you will discover two types of force and what effect friction has on moving objects. What is friction? Well, let's find out. Okay, in the vocabulary section, our first word is pull. Now, this is a force that you can make. Pull means to move something towards you. So, in this case, the horse is pulling the cart or the buggy because the horse is pulling it towards it. If you take something and you make it move towards you, you are pulling it like a door, right? A door will say push or pull when you go to a business, right? You go to a coffee shop and you open the door. Look at the door. It says push or pull. If it says pull, pull the door towards you, okay? We'll talk about push in a second. If it says push, push it away from you, okay? So those are our opposite words, push and pull. So if you pull the door, you pull it towards you. If you push it, you move something away from you. See, now in this situation, this girl is pushing the cart or the wheelbarrow away from her. So she's pushing it. The horse is pulling, the girl is pushing. Okay, so these are opposite forces. Okay, pull and push. Next we have bounce. That's a fun word, isn't it? You can bounce a ball, right? It means to move up or away from a surface after hitting it. So if you bounce a ball, you throw the ball on the ground, it hits the ground and bounces back up. If you go to some places, some fun places, you can bounce yourself, right? You can jump onto like a big air uh, container or tube and you will compress it and you'll bounce, your whole body will bounce back up. That's fun, isn't it? Right? It's a bouncing room, right? So, to bounce means to move up or away from a surface after hitting it. And of course, we like to play with balls, right? We throw a ball against a wall, it bounces back and we catch it, okay? So, you can play tennis by yourself if you want to, right? Against a wall. Or you can play uh, uh, table tennis also. But of course, many people all like to play uh, uh, just with a ball bouncing it to each other or just bouncing it by yourself. And of course, basketball is a sport where they really bounce the ball a lot. So that's bounce. Okay. Gravity. Now, gravity is a force, right? It's a very strong force and it pulls everything towards the ground. A few lessons ago, we talked about the planets that go around the sun. Every very, every object has some force, some attraction uh, that, that attracts other objects to it. The bigger the object, the stronger the force. So imagine the sun is very, very huge. It's very big. So it has a lot of gravity. And that's what keeps those planets. Of course, the planets have gravity too. And that's what keeps them going around each other instead of just flying off into space. Thankfully, the earth has gravity. We are all being pulled to the center of the earth, but not too strong. Our muscles are strong enough so we can move around. Whew. But it's thankfully strong enough, it keeps us on the ground so we don't go flying away. That's not good either, okay? So gravity, uh, we're used to the earth's gravity. It keeps us on the ground, keeps every object on the ground. Next, we have friction. Friction is another type of force. It's a force between two objects moving over each other. Now, here I have to be careful and say moving over each other. In English, you know, if you have an object here, right, and the ground is here and this object is moving, yes, the object is moving over the ground. But this, if the object is touching the ground and also moving, but it's touching, it's also over the ground. So in this case, I'm not talking about this situation. I'm talking about this situation when two objects move over, when an, one object moves over another object, but they are touching. Not here, they are touching. Then you have friction. Here, there's no friction, right? But here, yes, you have 
friction. So they have to be touching, not just over each other, but also touching. Like the golf ball, right? The golf ball over the grass. The golf ball, as it's moving, it has friction. It's slowing down because it's actually touching the grass. Okay. Surface. The surface is the top part of something. The picture here shows the surface of the ocean. Right? We can't see underneath the surface of the ocean. We only see the surface. It's the top part of something. My skin. We only see the surface of the skin. Thankfully, we don't see what's underneath. Ugh, yuck, right? So <laughs> we just see the surface of the skin. Okay, so those are some. Those are our words in the vocabulary section. Some of them are kind of interesting, maybe a little difficult. Let's explore them more in more detail in the two ideas and the reading section. Now, the first idea, the first main idea of this lesson, we're going to talk about two of the vocabulary words in more detail. We have gravity and we have friction. These are the two types of forces that we're going to look at in this lesson. So, as I explained before, gravity is a force that pulls everything to the Earth's center because the Earth is very large. It has a strong gra gravity, uh, a strong force of gravity. So, gravity is a force that pulls down things towards the earth. The amount of force, the amount, how much force, right? The amount of force, how much force that pulls something down toward the earth is called its weight. So, weight refers to how much does something weigh? How heavy is an object? Of course, if you have a very heavy object, you have a piece of metal, let's say gold. Gold is very heavy. You drop it, it falls very quickly. It has a strong force uh, that is pulling it towards the center of the earth. That's how much it weighs. But if you take a feather, right? A feather, how much does a feather weigh? A feather weighs almost nothing and you drop it, it just slowly goes down to the earth, right? Of course, we're talking about friction with the air, but that's another, another idea. If something is very heavy, it has a stronger force pulling it towards the earth. If something is very light, it falls not so, with not as much force, right? Okay, if you drop a heavy object on your foot, that's going to hurt. If you drop a light object on your foot, it's just going to bounce off, right? So, how much something weighs, how heavy is it, determines the force that it falls towards the earth. How strong that force is that it falls towards the earth. And that's what gravity is. Uh, well, that's a, 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 th a feature of gravity. It's not what gravity is, but it's a feature of gravity. It's the amount of force that pulls something down towards the earth. Okay. Now, next we have friction. Now, friction is another force, right? And it makes an object slow down when it moves over another object. And when it moves over another object, of course, it's touching. Consider this boy. He's on what we call rollerblades. I don't know if you remember rollerblades. They were very popular a long time ago. And of course, maybe nowadays too. But rollerblades, as this boy is skating or rollerblading on the ground, of course, he's touching the ground. The wheels are touching the surface of, you know, where he's rollerblading. If he's rollerblading on a smooth surface and he pushes off, he's going to go farther, right? He's going to, he's going to travel a longer distance. But if he's going over a rough surface, like there's a lot of, you know, ups and downs, like it's a, it's not very even, it's not very smooth, it's, it's rough, it's bumpy, then of course he's not going to travel as far because there's more friction. Friction is a force that makes an object slow down when it moves over another object. Think about ice, right? If you like ice skates, another example. Ice, when water freezes, the surface of the ice is very smooth, right? It's very slippery too. So you can, there's not a lot of friction. When you push off on ice skates, you don't have to push again. Just push off once and you go a long ways. Now think about if you're on rollerblades and you're on uh, a, like a bumpy uh, surface, 
you know, maybe the the people who made the road they didn't do a good job. It's not very uh, it's not very flat. It's got little bumps and little stones sticking up out of the tar. That's a bumpy road, right? If you push off, you're not going to go very far because it's a rough surface. So if it's smooth, you will there's not as much friction. If it's bumpy, there's more friction. And of course, when two objects meet each other, uh, they have friction between them. So if you want to eliminate something, you want to go faster, make a smooth surface. But if you want to slow things down, make a bumpy surface. That's part of the reason why the roads near your house might have a bump. Of course, the other reason is that the driver doesn't want to go boom like this when he drives his car. So of course he slows down. But anyway, that's a different idea. Anyway, that's friction. Okay. So we have two forces: gravity. And friction. Gravity is a force pulling、uh, things to the Earth. Friction is the force that slows objects down as they move on top of another surface. Okay. Now the next idea is what effect friction has on moving objects. I already talked about this a little bit, but as I said, smooth surfaces cause less friction, so it's very easy to ride your bike on a smooth、uh, trail or a smooth road. But if you go into nature, of course, you don't have this nice smooth road. You have a lot of rocks and maybe、uh, dirt, and there's little bumps. So we call that a rough surface. A rough surface causes more friction, and you need more force to make yourself go farther. You have to put more force into your bike on a on the road. You know she doesn't have to worry too much. She just pedals a little bit. It's very easy riding. But on a rough surface, you have to pedal more to make more force because you're losing a lot of force on the rough surface. Okay, good. Let's do the reading together. As usual, I will read out loud. You guys repeat after me, either out loud or in your mind. And focus on the words that we learned in the vocabulary. Also, focus on pronunciation. Are you guys ready? Let's begin. Force is a push or a pull on an object. If you push or pull something, you can change its position. It takes more force to move a heavy object than a light object. If you kick a ball, the ball will move away from you. The harder you kick the ball, the farther it will move. If you kick a ball up into the air, it will follow a curved line to the ground. Gravity is pulling the ball down. The amount of force that pulls something down toward Earth is called its weight. Gravity always pulls objects towards the ground. If you bounce a ball, it will go up and then down. Friction is a force that makes an object slow down when it moves. Over another object, smooth surfaces cause less friction than rough ones. Okay, let's talk about how the information in this reading passage is organized. Here we have main idea and details. So the main idea, of course, is a very general statement, and the supporting details are examples or specific ideas that support. That main idea. What is the main idea? The main idea is force is a push or pull on an object. Those are the types of forces that we're talking about, and、uh, we can say gravity, of course, pulls things. Friction、uh, pushes against things. Okay. So, what are the main? What are the supporting details? The first one: the harder you bounce a ball, the harder. What does that mean? Harder. It means the force you use. To bounce a ball on the ground, if you just drop the ball, it won't bounce very high. But if you throw the ball down very hard, it will bounce. What? The more it will move upwards, the more it will move upwards. So if you throw it down really hard, it will move upwards more. Now we could use more, or we could use farther. We saw both words in 
the reading. The more it will move upwards or the farther it will move upwards from the ground. Okay, farther means distance, a farther distance. Okay, so if you kick a ball, of course, if you kick the ball, the ball will move away from you. The ball will move away, of course, because you kick it and it moves away from you. Of course, as it moves away, it will move in a curved line back towards the earth. And that is a push, by the way. If you kick the ball, that is a push, okay? A very strong push, okay? Next, we have beep is a force. Now, what kind of force? We have two forces, gravity and friction that we were talking about. So, in this case, we're talking about when one object moves over another object. So, ah, that force is called friction, right? We talked about that. Friction. Friction is a force that happens when one object moves over another object and it slows it down. Now, beep is a force, oh, that's the other type of force, that always pulls objects towards the ground. It pulls it towards the ground. What force was that that we talked about? Of course, that was gravity. Gravity. Okay, so again, we don't think about these forces a lot, right? But they are always acting around us. Gravity, whew, thank goodness, it is always pulling us to the ground. Without gravity, everything would just be floating around in space, right? That's not good. We would not be here if it weren't for gravity. So, of course, gravity is a very good force. It keeps us on the ground. And it's interesting, too, because if you go to a very large planet, a planet that is much larger than Earth, the gravity is much stronger and you can't move around. But if you go to a planet or an object that is lighter, if you notice the moon uh, landing when the astronauts were on the moon, they could jump really high because the gravity wasn't that strong on the moon. Interesting. Okay, so gravity can change depending on where you are. Of course, normally we're just on Earth, so we don't think about it, but it is an interesting idea. Friction, of course, is always around us because it, it's, the, it's the force that slows things down when we, were, when we move uh, one object on another. Friction is important, of course, when we ride our bikes, when your parents drive their car. If they take, the, if they take their foot off the gas, the car will just naturally slow down. As long as it's not going downhill, as long as there's no gravity, if the car is going flat, the car will eventually slow down because there's friction between the tires and the, and the street that slows the car down. And that's, of course, is good, too. If there were no friction, everybody would be sliding all over the place and you would have no way to stop. That would be terrible. So friction is also very useful in our lives. Okay, so this lesson was about two interesting forces and it's also talking about pushing and pulling. Uh, so that's, these are interesting ideas to think about when we look at the world around us. Okay, I hope that you learned a lot of good words in this vocabulary, a lot of useful words, and also some useful ideas. Okay, we'll see you in the next video lesson. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.